Hello and welcome to the Cuyamonga Institute, our Q&A conversation for exploration series. I'm Paul Robert, the executive director and president of the Institute, and along with my wife, Laura Lee, the director of research, education, and outreach, we want to thank you for joining us today. The Cuyamonga Institute's an independent, nonprofit research organization committed to researching consciousness and the human experience following the footsteps of our founder, anthropologist, Dr. Felicitas Goodman. And as an educational institution, we recognize the thrive, we must take an open approach. And we invite scholars in related fields to help broaden the scope of our own work and exploration. And so that's why we call it Conversation for Exploration. On these weekly Sunday discussions, we've had a full spectrum of topics from the arts to the sciences and everything in between. And you're welcome to visit our website at queermongainstitute.com. All of our presentations are free. And as a nonprofit, we invite you to become a supporting member. And of course, we thank you, the community members, who continue to support the mission of the Queermonga Institute. But let's talk about today. As we continue the search for answers to the physiological shifts that support altered states of consciousness, we look to the body systems, the hardware, so to speak, that activates the software. We know it happens. I mean, with the ecstatic postures of our own institute, we continue to look at the how and the why. And for the last 25 years, Laura and I have been reading up on and interviewing researchers of many fields whose breakthrough theories pose new insights on the relationship between the body, brain, mind, and spirituality, matter, and spirit. Surely the spine and brain are involved, and our guest today has found that a key role may be played by the cerebral spinal fluid, the CSF, that bathes and connects them. What exactly is CFF, and what are the main roles that it play? If you're alive in a human body, <laughs> this research does apply to you. Oh, <laughs> and you know, when you hear things in threes, it often means pay attention, right? And I have been hearing about the cerebral spinal fluid. Um, over the years, one of the first references was talking to a friend of Istak Bentoff, author of Stalking the Wild Pendulum, who talked about his theory that Kundalini was activated by cerebral spinal fluid, had that role in there. And then um, I talked with uh, someone else recently about the San Bushmen and their dances, their, right. their rituals. Activation of the cerebral spinal fluid was mentioned. Yeah. And then finally, Thomas Riccio, right. University of Professor Dallas Theater Arts, recently joined us. And he was showing us a video of a shaman sitting, tapping her feet while she was in her ceremony divining. And I said, oh, she's tapping her feet. And Thomas replied, I think she's activating the cerebral spinal fluid, and that is part of the way they get into this uh, altered state. Well, uh, that led me to two reactions. One was, no wonder I'm very fond of my mini trampoline. Yeah. And the other one was, well, who's talking about this today? Who has investigated this in the lab? Who's making the connection of the cerebral spinal fluid, the CSF, to the ASC? the Altered States of Consciousness, so I googled. And I found our uh, guest today. Uh, and he is using these enticing key words and putting them together. One molecule away from seawater, pineal and pituitary glands, spinal column, kundalini, stem cells, Tibetan practice of transferring one life force to the unified field. Yeah. And most intriguing, because this nicely describes our experiences with our work, Activation of the chakras, we hear. Meridians, third eye, mm. tingling at the top of the head. Energy flow up the spine and through the body. Energy flow seen as light and color. So uh, this is exciting to talk with Dr. Mara Zapatera today. He's a quality of life therapist and researcher. His focus is on optimizing human performance through regenerative medicine, nutrition, mind-body exercises, mind training, and biofield therapies. I pulled that from his website. And he, um, he earned his MD and his PhD at Harvard Medical School, writing his thesis on the cerebral spinal fluid. He's a board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation and designs new programs and techniques to help alleviate pain, improve function, and increase quality of life. 
Wow. He's published many a scientific paper in medical books and uh, um, on disability and pain management. He's even written children's books for all ages. And he and his wife just had a new baby, so we want to uh, welcome not only him, but his entire family here with some happy holidays. And uh, thank you for being here today. I know you must be exhausted with a three-week-old. So. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Oh, this is a pleasure. You said that uh, when I first talked with you, not many people are talking about this in relation to mystical states of, of awareness. Um, and this is, your, this is your breakthrough research. So I'm happy to find you. Where did your journey begin? Um, Paul oh. has a similar journey. Uh, Paul was drugged by his wife oh. to a workshop in Santa Fe, which changed both of our lives. Right. And Paul heard me say some many years ago, my dear, you're not happy in the work that you're doing. Come and join me in mine. I think you have a similar path there, Mauro. Tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. we heard your story. It's exactly the same. <laughs> Paul was chuckling. Yeah. Ditto, 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 ditto. Yeah, no, um, uh, it's been quite a journey. And, uh, you know, I definitely, um, definitely give a lot of credit to my wife, uh, for sure. Um, I was in the middle of my MD PhD at Harvard Medical School. And so the way the, the way that you do it is um, you do two years of clinical practice and then you go off and you do your PhD. And once you finish your PhD, you come back and you finish your two years of clinical work that are still left. So usually it's um, usually it's anywhere between uh, eight to nine, 10 years to complete the whole MD PhD. Um, and I was interested in research, mostly from understanding how the human body worked uh, at the molecular level. So my major at UCLA was um, molecular cell and developmental biology. And, and my fascination was always, you know, how does a, how does like a single cell, like an egg that becomes fertilized with, with, with the sperm become this incredible multicellular organism that can talk and and see and hear and touch and love and connect and 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 be conscious and eat pizza pizza is my favorite food you'll get to know um you know and taste pizza taste ice cream lick an ice cream cone and have that sensation come to us you know how is that how is that really created from 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 the the single cell organism and in the lab, my my sort of idea of doing research was really to uh, to hone in on one on one question, one problem, and to understand it. You know, the let's say the most holistically you can understand it. How does this become that become that in a cell, and then how does the cell work, and how does the how does the organism work? Um, and I was really fascinated at that time in um, in cancer research. It was booming at the time, uh, and I met my wife in uh, 2002 now, uh, and I met her in DC and um, she, you know, we hit it off instantaneously and we talked on the phone for multiple hours each night. Uh, and, you know, she's very intuitive. Um, she's, she, you know, she's an incredible human being. and. She just noticed, right? She's like, wow, you know, you're going into like this healing profession, you know, medicine and research, sort of this healing profession, but you don't seem like you're doing much. You don't seem like you're doing much healing. You don't seem like you're very happy. Uh, and, you know, initially there's always a bit of resistance in my part, like, no, what are you talking about? I am happy, you know? And then you kind of try to put on that facade of happiness sort of thing, like, no, look, you know, and you smile and you think that's happiness. Um, and she was spot on. And, and, and so, but I'm like, you know, but I don't know what to do. I'm in the middle, you know, I was in the two and a half year mark of, of, of my, my MD PhD and I didn't really know what to do or how to do it. And, um, she moved in with me or was visiting me and, and she came to the medical school and she'd go to the library while I was going to class and she wanted to become some sort of um, holistic healthcare practitioner. And she 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 recalls going into the the uh, like our li our computer room and googling you know holistic health practitioner. And she you know naturopath came out and she found uh, polarity therapy. Um, and she looked it up and she's like, oh wow, this is you know this is what I want to do. 
where can I learn how to do it? And the school that she found was a school in Santa Fe um, called the New Mexico Academy of Healing Arts. And they had a four week program where uh, at that time, 2002, 2003, um, it was an associate, it was an APP and an RPP. And to get your APP, it was a four week, uh, it was a four week program. And she's like, let's go to Santa Fe. It was in Santa Fe, you know, let's go to Santa Fe, take some time off of your work. Let's go to Santa Fe and, um, and learn polarity therapy. And I read up on it and I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, uh, the founder is Dr. Randolph Stone, and he was a naturopath. He was a chiropractor. He was a doctor of osteopathy. He traveled in China and Egypt and 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 India and created this sort of holistic healthcare system that was based on um, uh, touch. It was based on nutrition. It was based on movement, and it was based on positive thinking. So four sort of concepts of the of the therapy itself. But he integrated Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese medicine, meridian, chakra systems, all these sort of things in the way that he contacted the body, in the types of foods that you ate, depending on what your constitution was, et cetera, et cetera. So I said, wow, this is really cool um, because even going through medical school, you know, the book that I was reading on the plane from L.A. to Boston was was Carolyn Mrs. Um, Anatomy oh. of the Spirit. Yeah. And so. I still had this, you know, it's like I, there was even working in the lab. It's like there's something greater than just our physical form. And so when she when 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 she presented to me this concept of polarity therapy or this sort of holistic health healing system that was based on energy and how energy manifested physically, it sort of made it 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 was difficult. It was sort of like I understood it from a period from a point of like body, but not like words or books. I hadn't studied it so, so, so much or practiced it, let's say. Um, and I said, you know, this sounds great, but I don't, I still don't know how to take off, <laughs> how to take time off. Well, ask them. Right. And, and, and lo and behold, um, I went to the, you know, to the Dean of the MD PhD program. And I said, you know, uh, I'm really not happy where I'm at. I'm really not happy in the lab. Um, I, you know, I see sort of two options right now. I'm either dropping out of the program, uh, or, uh, I need some time off. And they said, well, take time off, right? You're, uh, it was March. They say, how about you take, you know, how about you, you let, 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 let's see, give yourself a couple months. Let's see if you come back in the summer. If you don't come back in the summer, let's try to get you back in September by the start of the next sort of academic school year. They didn't want to um, lose you. Yeah. So they gave me, yeah. So they gave me that option, you know, and everything was sort of put on hold. It was sort of like, you're taking a pause, right? It was like, okay, great. Um, packed up our stuff, rented our apartment, you know, just did things that were kind of outside the norm of what I thought was, you know, this sort of very structured program, right? It's like you get into the program, you do your work, you get out, yada, yada, yada. Um, and this was like, you know, here comes this this incredible human being who just like, she, look, you're not happy. We need to change the way something's, you know, something's going on. I just found this great thing in Santa Fe. Uh, you've never been to Santa Fe. I've never been to Santa Fe. <laughs> Let's go together, get a one bedroom apartment and, uh, you know, our studio and live there for at least a month. Some calls uh, to adventure are impossible to refuse. Yes, yes. And so uh, when we got there, um, so, you know, we'll both laugh about this, but my whole thing was like, oh, you know, that sounds great. Why don't you go study that? I'm just going to take time off. I just need time to like reboot and resettle, you know, and I even talked to her. I was like, you know, maybe I'll be um, maybe I'll like coach baseball in, in Santa Fe or something like that. Right. Like so do something totally like, you know, I don't really want to go. <laughs> don't really want to look at myself um, at all, um, you know, and she's like. She's like, no, you're doing this program with me, right? And at first, um, so like I said, so the APP was four weeks. The RPP was like a six month program. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm definitely not doing the RPP. I'm just, okay, look, I'll do the APP with you. And then if you want to do the RPP, we'll see what happens. I'll stick around and, uh, and you do it, but I'm going to do something else. I might coach soccer or baseball or, you know, just uh, go work out at the gym while you're, you know, while you're, uh, you're, <laughs> 
they're going to class. And so we went to the APP and it was pretty, uh, it was pretty uh, amazing. Um, first of all, you know, here I was at Harvard Medical School coming into Santa Fe, we needed to make some money. So we started working at Trader Joe's. Um, we were working at Trader Joe's in Santa Fe, same shift. Uh, we we were not separated, so you can imagine as you're going into Santa Fe. If you've ever been into, into you know, if you've ever been to Santa Fe and you start doing polarity therapy, um, your stuff starts coming up. And so we were in this like literally like I, I don't even know how many square feet. <laughs> Must have been 500 square feet where you know uh, it was a room and the bathroom was separated by one of those sort of cardboard walls. Um, <laughs> And we work the same shifts at Trader Joe's. So we'd go to class and then from class, we go to Trader Joe's and we'd work because we had to make money uh, to pay for uh, things. And um, and then we'd come back home and we'd eat the food because you get it like a 10 or 20 percent discount from Trader Joe's. Right. So so we, you know, we we we'd, we'd eat their food. Um, but obviously, as you're going through this training. You're in the middle of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so part of the training was getting sessions. And the way that the best way that that polarity therapy has been described to me, which I really like, is like, um, you know, you're a uh, you're a metal worker, and what what they do with metal work is you boil the metal, boil the metal, boil the metal, boil the metal, and as all of the impurities come up from the metal, they come to the top of the metal and you scrape them off, mm -hmm. and then you boil the metal, you boil the metal, you continue boiling the metal, and as the impurities come up, you scrape them off. As they come up, you scrape them off. As they can come up. So after you get a polarity session, essentially polarity is sort of like boiling the metal, that there's going to be these impurities come up and you need to just sort of be aware of them and start to sort of scrape them off. And so the number of the number of arguments and fights that we got into, I mean, we, you know, we laugh at it now, but it was, you know, because our stuff just started arising, our stuff started coming up. And, you know, maybe for the first time in my life, I actually started to look at myself um and and you know it's quite quite amazing when you start when you start to sort of see yourself mm -hmm. um and that's and awesome. notice your tendencies and and things like that and that's what this that's what this therapy did for us and i was the skeptic right so when they started talking about things like chakras or things like auras it was like no that doesn't exist right like i did anatomy lab i feel you know it's like i i got to see the tissues and stuff like that and finally it was sort of like you know if you're open if you allow your awareness to even have the possibility of something being open, of something being possible, then you might actually have that experience. If you don't, and you just close yourself off to that, then what's the likelihood that you might actually find it? Probably zero or close to zero. Um, and so, you know, so there was this slight opening, there was like a tiny bit of opening where I was like, could it like the, my, 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 mind was like well could it be possible right could that could it be possible that we could feel auras with our hands and that was the question that i sort of posed right I, although i thought it wasn't possible the question was could it be possible and if it is possible what do i need to do to feel them and slowly slowly with time it was sort of like well you know uh, when you put your hand on a tissue, like like if you put your hand on your hand, well, what do you feel, right? What comes to you? Okay, well, I feel the skin. Okay, is there anything underneath that, right? Do you feel anything underneath that? And so what we learned, the majority of the lessons that we got on a daily basis was becoming more sensitive with the touch, like our, our, our the, the human touch. So it was going from feeling the skin to then feeling the tissue underneath it to feeling the fluid in the tissue underneath it to feeling the fascia to feeling the muscles to feeling the bones and if you connected with them could you connect them as individual but as a whole right so it's like can you tap into the bone as the bone is having a relationship with the fluids and with the fascia and, you know, in terms of your next speaker, for instance, Stardust, yeah. can you, you know, and this is, this is what I teach some of some of the people today is sort of like, well, can you tap into the bone? Now, if you can tap into the bone, can you tap into the carb, the, the carbon? Can you tap in low? Let, let's back up. Can you tap into the calcium? 
for instance, in the bone? Can you tap into the carbon that is one of the molecules, for instance, that is making the carb, the, the calcium atom, mm -hmm. right? And so now follow that carbon. And so in your next week's talk, right, where has that carbon been that's now in your bone as All an element? creation in back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so so and, and this pertains to, you know, you're drinking water or coffee. What is the hydrogen molecule made? Where does where has that hydrogen molecule been? Right. Or the or the water molecule been in its journey of, you know, or even where has that electron been that has made the hydrogen atom, for instance. Yeah. Um, and, and that's sort of then that's sort of then this practice of wow, okay, I'm feeling the skin. And as you're feeling the skin, you can go all the way back to stardust, literally, wow. <laughs> un de decreating yourself and recreating yourself, decreating, recreating, decreating, recreating. And so every split second, there's sort of this manifestation that's occurring, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so I learned palpation skills uh, with our teacher at the, you know, going through polarity therapy. But I thought initially, okay, four weeks, that's it. Uh, I'm done, right? There was still this, like, I'm done. <laughs> Not with Too both hands activated you know, like that. You know, yeah, yeah, because it was like, okay, you know, like with the APP, you had to get three sessions on yourself. And with the, with the RPP, you had to get 20 sessions, right? So imagine like, oh my goodness, like, do I really have to get 20? And, and, and she's like, you know, I remember our conversation. It was like one o'clock at night and we were trying to fall asleep. We had gotten uh, out of a late Trader Joe's shift and we were trying to fall asleep <laughs> and we had class the next day. And she's like, you're going to do the RPP with me. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not I love this woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing it. And she's like, you're going to do it. And, uh, and, and, and it was sort of like a, um, it was sort of like a contract, I guess, like, a, you know, like some sort of karmic contract, like, hey, you know, like, can you do it? Like, will you do this with me? I want to go on this journey with you. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's an interesting, like, should, can we start this, you know, can we start this relationship going on this journey together? Mm -hmm. And um, we funny. did. And so now it's sort of like, you know, hey, you guys have a really great relationship. What do you recommend? Oh, you need to go to polarity school together and then get married. <laughs> yeah, then get married. Down the same rabbit hole. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> so, um, so she definitely, so she really guided, you know, she really helped and, and, and sort of pulled me out of that, of that, of, of the trenches. Um, and, uh, and we went through it together and it became this, um, this amazing sort of journey together um, of, you know, palpation, listening skills, um, just sort of increasing conscious awareness of, of ourselves, of others, of how we moved in space and time, um, you know, and what we ate, how that affected our energy. Uh, and we were getting sessions, right? So every day you're getting a session. You're, you also, you have to get yeah. professional sessions. You have to give sessions. I think we had to give something like 180 sessions in, oh in like, wow. in like five months. Right. And, and, um, and so we went through this together, uh, and it was pretty, you know, it was probably it was one of the coolest things that that we did starting our relationship and that just sort of set the groundwork mm -hmm. for uh for our relationship and then i went back and i and 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 i was in the i was in santa fe um i was in santa fe and i look up you know i asked myself because i was still contemplating just dropping out of the phd and finishing my md and just being over with it and i look up so i asked you know i just sort of asked the universe a question and it was just spontaneous. It was just, it was instantaneous. It was just, you know, do I, hey, universe, if I should complete my MD PhD, give me a sign within the next two minutes. <laughs> and um, I was in, we were walking in Santa Fe and it was this beautiful, you know, we were just like downtown Santa Fe. And uh, I'd never seen this in my life, but I have since then. You know, I look up and um, I don't know what they're called, but they have a specific name to them. So the whole the entire sky was blue, except for this this very light white cloud was in the sky and inside the cloud was a perfect rainbow. 
Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And New I've Mexico seen these afterwards, yeah. but I just looked up and I got, I've never seen that before. And I go, that's my sign. And, and I knew it that I would have to, you know, whatever it was, however difficult it might be that I needed to complete, you know, this, this journey, um, of, of doing my, my PhD. And, um, and so I went back and I said, okay, well, I'm not doing it in cancer. And I started to look for a lab that was doing more like brain, uh, mm -hmm. development because I was becoming so interested in the brain, uh, in the fluids during the polarity sessions, we would also get a, a day of cranial sacral therapy. Mm -hmm. And that's where you start to kind of understand and learn about the fluid. Um, and you start to learn how to palpate the fluid. Mm -hmm. And, 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 oh. and I would get these sessions and, and literally, you know, I was just like, wow, I would sense myself going into these altered states of consciousness while I was getting these sessions. And I had a pretty good anatomy background. And so I could visualize, I could see where I could feel the energy building, where I could actually feel the pulsations that were occurring while I was getting these sessions, right? And all they are, they're just very subtle. You know, it's somebody holding your cranium We've had them. And, and, and you just going into a very relaxed parasympathetic state. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I felt these sort of pulsations, these undulations, these waves of energy that were happening in my, in, in my cranium. And where I visualized it was the third ventricle, which is this midline space in the middle of your, of your brain. And I, as, I, as I brought my awareness to the third ventricle, just by simply bringing my awareness to the third ventricle, I felt as if the energy started having a relationship with me. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. And as if I could actually have be in relationship with it as if it was like a dance, I guess. Oh, yeah. And I was like, wow, this is really, you know, this is amazing. And so during our lunch times, when we started learning this, some of the students that were more interested in this, we would essentially spend our entire lunch and all we would do, we'd have an hour and a half. I'd hold somebody's cranium for 45 minutes and just see, right? It was like, it was like we were trying to do absolutely nothing mm -hmm. except for just be present, mm -hmm. neutral and together. Like, so we just, you know, so we just held and, and they, they, they were doing whatever they were, you know, relaxing and I was doing whatever I was doing. Um, and then uh, I, we would switch. So then I would get a session for 45 minutes, right? And, um, and I just sort of felt, you know, I started feeling all these in, in different things. And that's when I started becoming very interested in, in, um, in, in more of like the brain and the brain development. And our teacher at that time said, well, you know that the cerebrospinal fluid, what you're palpating is one molecule away from seawater, ocean water. Hmm. And I said, there's no way, like, there's no way that, you know, the CSF is one molecule away from seawater. Let me look that up. So that night I went and I looked up you know, what the cerebrospinal fluid has in it, what it does. Um, and what I realized is that we didn't know much about the cerebrospinal fluid. Right. And so uh, I said, wow, you know, we don't really know much about it. We don't really know what's in it at a high level. And so my, 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 my hope was that, hey, can I go back to Harvard and can I do something in relationship to brain development uh, to some degree? And if the cerebrospinal fluid ends up being a part of that, then it's a part of that. Um, but I was sort of becoming more interested in, you know, in the brain and, 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 and brain development. So that's kind of where we, we, we returned to Boston, uh, and continued my, 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 my then thesis in a new lab, looking at the brain. It was a bit of a pivot, but a very profound pivot. And it was able to incorporate all that you had spent time doing in Santa Fe, mm -hmm. all those. Yeah. It was brilliant. What did you find? So is it a molecule away from seawater? Is it related to the amniotic fluid? Tell us what you found. Yeah, so we found an interesting, so I went back and, and, and um, uh, I will share a slide with you um, in terms of, you know, one of the embryological slides that, that, that I saw. Oh, this is exciting. Right. Uh, this is exciting because we're looking for what are the mechanisms, what are the mechanics of how the, the anatomy, how our physiology shifts, activates, supports 
altered, altered states. states. Yeah. It's designed into us. Mm -hmm. It's designed. Uh, okay, so this was actually this was like in an anatomy book that I was studying because we were looking at um, we were looking at the developing brain. And here I put a thing. You know, this is the this is the developing brain right here. This black part uh, right here. And so we were looking at wow. uh, one of the questions that we were asking early on that the um, that the professor I was working with wanted to ask is what's the difference between the right and the left brain? Because we do have differences in right and left brains. And he was trying to figure out when do those differences start occurring? Can we actually know notice those differences? And so I was looking at, you know, just kind of learning, learning the embryonic anatomy. Uh, and this is um, this is at eight weeks. Uh, of development and what you see is uh, so this is the developing brain and I was looking at this and I mean you guys might be struck by it too but there's these like islands in the middle here right mm -hmm. they're pretty big uh, compared to the rest so this is an entire human head at eight weeks mm -hmm. right and this is the these are like these islands inside this white space mm -hmm. and I'd, I saw this for the first time and I was like what are those islands <laughs> I didn't actually know what they were. Um, and so um, I turned to my postdoc and he said, oh, that's the choroid plexus. And the choroid plexus is something that we all have in the middle of these spaces that makes cerebrospinal fluid. And so this produces the cerebrospinal fluid. So this tissue will secrete fluid. And this is all space in here. And I say, wait, that white is all space. What is that white, right? And so that white is all the cerebrospinal fluid. It's all this blue is all fluid that is bathing your entire developing brain. Hmm. And if you've ever been in a lab or worked in a lab, um, you know that in order to grow tissue, you need to have a fluid medium. And so um. I, I don't know how many years <laughs> I have spent going back to the lab you know, on a Saturday or Sunday just to uh, feed the fluid so that the tissues could grow, right? I had to either take it out and, and get rid of all the toxins and the, and the debris and, and add new fluid, add new, we call it, we call it media, we call it culture media. Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, cells, tissues, they need fluid to, 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 to stay alive, to be nurtured. So and deliver everyone, the nutrients and take away the waste. Deliver the right? nutrients, exactly. Yeah. And so everyone um, was always looking at the cells. Okay, well, what are the cells doing? What's you know, how how are the cells different? You know, et cetera, et cetera. What's the mechanism from the cells? And I said, well, if the cells don't have the fluid, the cells die. Hmm. And so and so it was the first time where we actually started then culturing the fluid itself and asking, well, what's actually in the fluid? because the fluid is providing the nutrients to the brain so that the brain can actually develop. Make and when you look space. at this, makes sense, right? And so this was sort of the aha moment. And I remember um, for me, I remember sending my, my boss. So I was just looking at this and then I said, hey, you know, from this image, it seems like the cerebrospinal fluid may actually have some function in brain development. I looked <laughs> up some papers in, in PubMed and I don't see much, maybe I could do my, thesis because he was kind of one of those people that um, some professors will like give you your thesis and be like, okay, you know, if you work on this, you'll get your thesis. He was one, he was like, you know, I, I want you to come up with your own thesis. You know, you need to find your own thesis. And so I sent him this email and I remember sending him this email and it was like three o'clock in the afternoon. And then I left the lab. I went to go get some coffee and, um, and there I am drinking my coffee, right? And I come back maybe like 30 or 45 minutes later and he's pacing the lab because- um, He's so excited. He's so excited about this email that he couldn't <laughs> find me to talk to me about it, right? And so uh, and so we knew that this was a good idea uh, and, and, and that, you know, that sort of took us on our, um, on our trajectory. And, um, you know, we did a, what we did is we did an entire analysis um, of both, you know, embryonic and, uh, and, 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 and adult cerebrospinal fluid. We found that uh, it's got so many molecules in it. Uh, it's not one molecule away from seawater, uh, though evolutionarily it has a function 
similar mm -hmm. to what seawater has. And, and we can get into that if you're interested as well. Um, but it has so many growth factors and nutrients and hormones. It's got a job to do. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and it changes. It actually changes quite dramatically. Uh, with the stem cells, yes, right? With the stem cells over time, with development, with what you need, for instance. So it's a very dynamic, it's a, it, 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 it's a very dynamic fluid. And for instance, there's more growth factors in it as an embryo than there is as an adult. But if you have like a stroke or you have like a brain injury, then there, then you get more growth factors that are actually released into the cerebrospinal fluid. It's intelligently to, responding. Exactly. And that helps yeah. to then regenerate damaged tissues just as they, just as the cerebrospinal fluid helps to provide nutrients to developing brain to, to stimulate what we call neurogenesis, the creation of new neurons or um, even differentiation. So, as the fluid changes in composition, uh -huh. that tells the stem cell that it can actually now differentiate into a neuron and become a specialized cell mm -hmm. as opposed to stay as, um, as, as a stem cell. It's um, sequenced to program the body, to guide it, to actually grow it. But it also goes down the spinal column as well. It's connecting uh, much yeah. more than the brain. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, you know, so that's, 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 um, so when you start looking at it, right, you start thinking, oh my goodness, you know, where, where is this fluid located? So then we started, you know, even looking at where, you know, where does this fluid come from? Where is it in us now? Um, you know, uh, where does it go? And so what we even didn't realize, you know, is I started looking at it and um, I was like, well, where does the cerebrospinal fluid come from? Like in the womb? Right. And um, oh. I'll go back here in terms of development. Um, so this is the slide that I use for, you know, so mm -hmm. and, and the reason I talk about this is because if you do any sort of like energy hands on healing or anything like that, you may feel um, you may feel these fluid forces and, and just to know that they might be present. Uh, would be important, let's say, of like, oh, wow, you know, I really felt your uh, embryology. I'm hearing a, a feedback for some reason. I don't know why I wasn't uh, We're it. not hearing it. Okay. Is anybody in the audience hearing it? We're not hearing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let me just see here. Okay. So if you can see, do you see this little black shape here that's you <laughs> wow that's you as a tiny little the embryo. Seed sprouting, right? and this is the placenta this whole thing here is the placenta that is uh, being embedded in the womb of your mother hmm. and you can see that you know you're just you're just surrounded so this would be like a uh you know let's say a three you're only three cells wide here three cells, right? Three cells up and, and, and really small, maybe a millimeter. And you're just completely informed. You're bathed by this fluid. You have yolk sac in front, you have this amniotic fluid on your back. So if you're like, this is you kind of laying down in essence, like your face is up over here and it's looking down towards this way. If you were to think of where the cells are going to be developed, but you might feel these forces in like a healing session or something like that you might actually feel yourself going back to the womb um and and being in a in a fluid environment and you are and then this is the chorionic your fluid owner's manual for the human body isn't it exactly this is, yeah a page so this is the chorionic it. fluid so the chorionic fluid at the beginning is very it's, it's a lot of the fluid and that's why early on mm -hmm. in pregnancies if they're concerned about any sort of genetic issues they'll do a chorionic villi sampling and then they'll have to go uh they'll do um th th they'll do another another later on they'll do more of an amniotic fluid sampling because this fluid this sac essentially pushes all this out and and then the embryo is just bathed in the amniotic fluid uh in in the womb 
And so if you were to try to figure out, okay, well, where, where, you know, the CSF isn't here yet, it's all amniotic fluid. This is that plate that I was telling you about, that's those three cells. And what happens is, so the amniotic fluid is out here. So literally it's bathing the outside of these cells. And then it, it, it undergoes a process here. It invaginates this tissue. Oops. This tissue invaginates and becomes this tube. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And what is kept in the tube. So if you can imagine the, the amniotic fluid. So here's your, here's your, your, you know, your, the amniotic fluid is up here. It's like where my head is. It's and this tissue in, invaginating and then closing off and making a tube That's and now you have amniotic fluid inside that tube but as it closes off now and it closes itself off to the environment now it becomes cerebrospinal fluid got it and that tube is still present in you today that tube is you have a you have a tiny you, you know the spinal canal which is a tiny tiny tube that that goes all the way up your spinal cord and it goes all the way up into the fourth ventricle and it goes all the way up into the third ventricle into the brain uh and so that tube then this becomes your spinal cord and up by the head it becomes your brain so it, it differentiates it, it proliferates quite a lot at the brain and it becomes the brain and it starts making the brain and then uh and then down by the tail let's say our tail mm -hmm. it stays as the um as the spinal cord. I've heard it's so, described as worms with appendages, huh. right? And so that's yeah. one phase we go through. Yeah. Yep. And so these are some images of a mouse mm -hmm. and you can see how th these are the folds. You can see the folds occurring here, the folds getting deeper, and then you can start seeing the folds starting to fuse here and here. And, and right here, you can see where part of it is fused right here and then part of it is still open so this is where the fusion is occurring so this is where you're still getting mixture of the amniotic fluid and the cerebrospinal fluid and then when you get complete closure here now it's all inside now it's called cerebrospinal fluid and outside is is the uh is the amniotic fluid so now you're an embryo that's floating in amniotic fluid mm -hmm. with cerebrospinal fluid on the inside as your midline you call it a radiant lake of fluid. Yes, yes, yes. So that gets into the more like, you know, the spiritual aspects of it. But this is like, this is what it would look like, you know, as you undergo, this is 25 days of development. This this is a whole tube here inside the tube, if you can imagine, is all filled with fluid. Uh, and then as the brain develops, then this part is filled in fluid, but then you still have this tube going all the way down and then the cavities inside get a little smaller as the brain continues to develop, but then you still have the cavities inside. And then inside, you know, the inside the spinal cord, you have uh, you have the fluid as well. The lake maintains its passageways because it wants to flow. Exactly. Yep. And, and this I is think an this image. is spiritual. I think this is miraculous. I mean, when yes. you look at life and how it intelligently unfolds and yes. knows what it's doing and has this grand design. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so this is a human, this is an MRI of the human, and this is the brain, they're looking this way, and you can see the brain, and then you can see the spinal cord in black going all the way down. And all that you see in red is the cerebrospinal fluid. So everything that you see in red, so you can see that even though the spinal cord ends here, at, a, at about lumbar vertebrae two or so, the fluid goes all the way down to your sacrum. So if you can imagine your head, and you know your brain and your whole spinal cord being buoyant in this fluid not only from the inside but also from the outside and 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 and, and you know many people don't realize that we have this entire fluid system that's supporting our brain um that that helped during embryo embryological development that's still providing nourishing factors to our brain um and that you know growth factor cushioning yeah cushioning everything yeah wow and how did you start to investigate the altered states of consciousness that it might support what is okay. what might its role be there 
I mean, we've yeah, heard so it's... that really came from a um, from personal experience with the with the cerebrospinal fluid itself and starting to do meditations with it and through the craniosacral sessions that I would get where um, just starting to bring awareness like the palpation of the fluid and starting to just open up to can you feel the mm -hmm. fluid palpating moving in under your hands let's say when you're making contact with it or mm -hmm. for me it was actually when i was getting a session so i was getting a session and essentially what it started feeling like and 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 mind you and the reason why i have so much anatomy and embryology in my in, in my slides is because the anatomy and embryology helped inform me and ground the experiences that I was having. And okay. so when I had a felt sense of, let's say, you know, what when I felt as if there I could feel, let's say, subtle pulsations in the middle of my brain, or I could feel movement of something. Um, you know, I came from a very skeptical, you know, background. And so, you know, for me, it's sort of like, oh, can, you know, can you feel me touching your hand? Yes, I can. Well, what does that feel like? Mm -hmm. Right? Even just that, right? So what does that feel like? Right? So now here I am getting a session, right? And you and, can put cause and effect to it. Right. Like and now all of a sudden the same okay so the first thing that would occur to me for instance was i i would start getting this pulsation it felt like you know it almost felt like somebody was just sort of like like hitting a drum like boom boom <laughs> boom boom yeah and so yeah where do i go right so the first thing was oh this is my heartbeat right okay i'm just i'm perceiving my heartbeat and so what i would do because i was a you know sort of a medical scientist i'd put I'd, I'd get my radial pulse, right? While I was in the middle of a session, right? So I check my radial pulse and I'm like, no, my radial pulse is different than this pulsation, uh -huh. right? And then I go, okay, well then it's my breath. It's my, it's my, it's my lung expansion and contraction. And so I'd count, I, I, I then bring my awareness while I was still perceiving this sort of pulsation that was occurring. And I'd be okay. This is this is I'm noticing my breath, and it was different than my breath. And I go, I go, okay. Well, then this is something different. And I go, okay. Well, where do I feel it? Right, just like anything else. It's like, okay. Well, where do you feel that? Right, like, oh, I'm touching your 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 knee. I'm touching your elbow. I'm touching your, you know. Okay. So all of a sudden, so, you know. So let's say somebody's doing this to your hand. It's like, oh, I feel it on my left hand. Like a like a drum beat or like tapping of the feet, something to act. Exactly. Like. Well, I've got a and question. So I've got a question. So a lot of your sensory data input came from your hands and your practice of let me run my hand over this. What are the molecules? What's the calcium? What's the uh, molecule of oxygen? Do I, you know, feel texture? Do I feel smooth? Do I feel hot? Do I feel cold? What am I feeling? Picking up from the hands. Is it that we can train our senses? like the perfumers train their nose, they have a profession, they spend hours uh, smelling different aromas and scents, and they start to discern it, they start to map it out. Something in the brain starts to lay down data and information and texture and nuance and molecules that actually come in and inform, and you can develop that sense. They say that the masters of this can detect and differentiate and describe a million different senses. So there are people who are blind who can learn to see. You can you can actually do, and we've done some of these exercises. Oh, my eyes are closed and yet I'm picking up yellow, I'm picking up sharp, I'm picking up smooth. You can train your, your hands to start. I haven't done it to the extent you have. Um, but you can focus your awareness and then have this relationship, have this exchange of data. That's so exactly is that, it. yeah, is that exactly. we can train ourselves to do this. Exactly and I'm it. very sure that our earliest ancestors were doing this because they were so attuned to their environment. Yes. They didn't have the distractions we do. Our brains are so capable. So are the animals out there. This is just part of what we do to sense survival mechanism, but also joy of life and pulling in data. And it's joy, it's joyful. 
right? You take a dog for a walk and he's out there reading the newspaper with every scent that he picks up. He's pulling in so much data. So we can train our senses. It's probably that we have the capacity in our senses, but we've just been lazy through time, through the vagaries of history. We've lost that ability, but it's latent, it's there. So are you activating the, C the CSF by the mere attention? Does it also require palpation, you know, doing this, or maybe tapping your feet, jumping on a trampoline, yes. dancing yes. with a foot? I love you know? that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So first of all, absolutely. So spot on, right? So in my, when I take people through like, like, like the meditations, my, you know, my number one is the breath. My number two is sensations, right? Yeah. Because what, what happens when we're all, we're all, we're all good when, when a pleasant sensation comes up, but what happens when an unpleasant sensation comes up? Oh, I don't want to go there. Right. We get, we get fearful. Maybe, maybe fear arises or something arises. And so, and, 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 and yes, we can be good at, let's say, okay, so what am I hearing now? What am I feeling? What am I seeing? What am I smelling? What am I, what am I tasting? But also what, what's happening? What is my, my, you know, what is my muscle inside my finger feeling? Mm -hmm. What is my heart? What is my lung from the perspective of the lung feeling? Right? What is my heart from the perspective of the blood feeling? Those are also sensory aspects that you can train and tune yourself to of becoming like a blood molecule and traveling through your body are perceiving the, the mm -hmm. your tissues, perceiving your endothelial tissues, the lining of your blood of your blood vessels from the perspective of the blood, or perceiving yeah. the blood from the perspective of your endothelial tissues, right? All right, all right, right there, you're in an altered state to do exactly. that. Exactly. And so, mm -hmm. so, so that's what I start training. And I say, look, I believe, and this is just because of the background I came from, but I believe that if you have even a smidgen of anatomy, like what does a red blood cell look like under a microscope? You what were able does... to do this much more effectively because you knew the anatomy intimately. Exactly. So I knew, right? So I knew I was very, I mean, I had numerous, you know, neuro, neuroscience courses and, 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 and anatomy courses and things like that. And so I was so comfortable with the anatomy and in following the energy through the physical body and because i had done polarity i also then became accustomed with if i felt it that it was sort of hovering at a distance from the body right to say that we are just our you know we're just limited to our physical form is is silly missing half the picture yeah. right we can feel we can put electrodes out here and and notice brain waves Right. We can put a monitor. Oh my gosh. Three or four feet away from the heart and, 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 and measure Pick up data. Yeah. Heart, right. Mm -hmm. And so, so now, so now it's just like, okay, here's physical. Oh, wait, here's, here's actually, it's something's outside. It's, it's, it's beyond the body now. It's beyond this physical realm that I call the body. So you're right back to those that. auras, which was one of your key exactly. questions early on. Exactly. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so first of all, from the sensors, right then. So I recommend really kind of doing a practice, doing a practice of just, you know, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? What am I feeling? What am I sensing? Right. And being comfortable doing it in a realm of safety, doing it where you feel totally comfortable with the sensations that arise, maybe not bringing up something that's traumatic at first. Okay, yeah. or being like, oh, let me, you know, but doing it with like music, right? Putting on your favorite music and just saying, mm -hmm. let me listen to the music. Let me notice everything that this music is doing. Okay, I hear it. Now, where is it going? Right? What, 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 what other sensory organs are you are you picking up? And this is definitely something that I, that that can be trained. And this brings us into then the subtle sensations of the human energy system. Hello. That we can start to have relationships with that we can start to become comfortable with. And when we overlap it with physical or esoteric anatomy, now all of a sudden we're saying, oh, wow, now we have a map. There's a map that's 
So for me, right, it started where um, there was this, right, it was this pulsate, it was, it was not, so I check my radial pearls, it's not the heartbeat. Mm-hmm. I check my respirations, it's not the breath. Process of elimination. Else. Exactly. Okay. Well, what else could it write? So now I'm going, are there any other systems, the lymphatic system, right? So I'm like, well, I've never actually felt the lymphatic system move, uh, but let me see. Okay. There's something else. It feels like it's deep. It feels like it's deep, right? And this is coming from, and mind you, this is, I'm presenting it to you 12 years later, right? This, this was coming from a perspective of, I know the anatomy, but uh, I really have no, nothing else like i'm not i i I wasn't like i'm not a spiritual person per se in this right i was just sort of open to the perspective of what is occurring to me in my body at this time and that's it and how do i explain it right and so i didn't have a book that was like oh you should be feeling this and this and it was sort of like oh what are you feeling well wow okay when i when somebody puts their hands on my head and i lay here and I get into a very peaceful state. This mm-hmm. is what I start feeling. And it was reproducible. Feeling or seeing or the energy Everything. surges. Seeing, I mean, describe feeling. it. Yeah. So seeing it with your mind's eye or just like direct knowing eye. without seeing. Pulsation. Or... Internal, inner, inner body sensations, pulsations. Waves of energy going up and down. Not yet. Heat, so, cold. Not yet, right. So not yet. So initially, so for me, it was just like this initial opening. And what I know now is that it was the third ventricle. So in the third ventricle of my brain, which is this midline space in the middle of all our brains, it literally, it in my mind's eye and in my in the felt sense of the tissues of my brain going... Mm-hmm. Okay, and right where the pituitary and the pineal gland are. Exactly. So the pituitary is in front, mm-hmm. pineal is in back, and here's this. Mm-hmm. Here's this. Okay, a, a, a heartbeat or a drum beat, a drum That's beat, why I went an to activation. The heart, right. Yeah. Yes. So I go to the heart. Right. Okay. Here's my heart. Here's the heartbeat. Um, and it was reproducible. So at first, I was just became comfortable with that, right? And then I'd be like, oh, let's. I was, you know, sort of like, let's be totally open and see what happens. Boom. Instantaneous. Here it is again. Oh, wow. Same mm-hmm. rhythm, right? And then that's when other things started to uh, appear, sort of, um, um, you know, the rising of sensations from the sacrum up the spinal canal, through the neck, up into the back of the head, up to the crown, you know, where I started feeling literally I, I tingle you know, it was starting to t- like I went to the I went to the mirror and 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 I I checked to make sure if I had ants. I felt <laughs> like it felt like I had about a million bugs on my mm-hmm. scalp. And mm-hmm. it was like and I was like, yeah. whoa, you know, I, I gotta get these, I gotta get these bugs out of literally. I went to the mirror to see you know, did I, yeah. right. Did I just lie down on a pillow that had like a million bed bugs on it? And I looked at the pillow, pillow didn't have anything. I went to the mirror, I looked for any bugs or anything moving on my scalp. Mm-hmm. And then what started happening is 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 then I could actually start to do this without the cranial sacral, right? So I would bring and so that's where you asked, well, can we just bring our attention to it? And that's if you go to my website. Okay, what I say to everyone is, um, is just bring your awareness to your cerebrospinal fluid and see what happens. That's it. You can be the biggest skeptic, which I was. Yeah. Just do that. That can't, you know, I you, like the facts are we have cerebrospinal fluid. It's in the middle of our brain. That's all you need to know. <laughs> now bring your attention to it. Trust the process, okay. we say. <laughs> now, right now, now just bring your. So then, what started? So then, I could actually um, um, go into a meditative state and 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 start to experience this mm-hmm. fluid. Mm-hmm. And what I started recognizing was that um, there was uh, there was an element of information in this fluid that was special that was unique and and the more i started having a relationship with it the more that i saw this fluid as sort of like a bridge like as a connector to 
some sort of undifferentiated space. So mm -hmm. I consider what I consider my physical body is a differentiation mm -hmm. of undifferentiated energy, energy, right? So Cosmos. I am I, like, yeah, so this is there's some there's some sort of differentiation that has that has occurred. And if you start looking at some of like the consciousness research, um, there's very interesting theory out there by a guy by the name of Joaquin Kepler, who I'm working with. Okay. Um, and, and, and he, you know, he talks about this manifestation from this, what, what he calls the zero point field to physical form. And, and, you know, and I asked him, I said, could the, if for our bodies, because he says that this is happening for everything. So it's this totally, you know, it's this manifest, uh, it, 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 it's sort of the sentient field that's everywhere. Um, could that, could this ZPFs, could the zero point potential field actually be informing the fluids? Yeah. So that was my question to him. He, he got back to me literally in like 12 hours. He's like, <laughs> This is a fascinating, you know, I never even thought of that. Um, this is a fascinating, uh, 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 let me, you know, let me sort of think about it. And so, you know, so now I, I kind of put it in his field. We've had a couple of meetings and I said, look, I'm going to start to create some meditations around this. And he said, this seems per like, this is awesome. Right. So, <laughs> um, so that's like, you know, that's like 2022. That's my like 2022 work with this guy. But, um, you know, just simply bringing your awareness to it and then seeing with the same subtle sensory experience and ability as you have to, you know, to do the, the touch or what you're hearing or, you know, whatever might have it now. Um, what are you sensing? Can you dissolve and expand? Can you contract to a tiny point? Can you kind of disappear into the void? Yes. Can you shape shift? Can you have waves of energy just shooting out? You're just this container about to explode. Can you see color fields? Can you feel hot and cold? That's what we do in our work. Everything. So I feel that this is really related. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. There's so, many avenues to, to do so this. You this brought is something, right. So you brought something in really important. And I really want to stress this because okay. when I teach this, we don't go straight to the cerebrospinal fluid. Okay. Because that ability of what you said to be grounded yet spacious. Yeah. To be here yet nowhere. Yeah. Okay. To be uh differentiated yet undifferentiated simultaneously yeah. a foot in this world a foot in that world right centers that, everywhere boundaries you nowhere do that too so in my yeah. experience with working with others if we don't if we don't become if we don't have the ability with our awareness to hold mm -hmm. those multiple real those multiple dimensions right. then it might get scary it might get fearful there might be things that happen that let's say you don't you you're not so certain. So the way that I start with is, for instance, can you feel your hand touching any object and simultaneously can you hear? So feel the hand and listen. Mm -hmm. Right. And can you do that simultaneously? So can you with your awareness, can you expand? Can you do this sort of sensory training that you're talking about? Right to expand your awareness to, okay, well, I feel my hand. Well, okay, now I'm feeling my hand because my concentration is going to my hand. Mm -hmm. But now can you, in, can you include other senses, right? And at first you do it with other senses that you feel comfortable with. And then you start to be, just be open. Then you start to be so comfortable with anything that appears that you can do it with everything. That that sense of here and nowhere can be held the same moment, right? So you might feel as if your body is literally expanding to the point of dissolutionment, mm -hmm. dissolvement, yeah. but you're feeling your feet on the floor. Yep. Yep. Truly. Right? Uh, and so that's and a state of awareness. Exactly. Yeah. And cross. And then you start to have a relationship, right? And then you can start to have a relationship in my, in my experience with the undifferentiated mm -hmm. which is full of information yeah. right 
Mm -hmm. And you can start to have a relationship with it. And once you start having a relationship with it, then there's this, you know, there's a, there's sort of a dance that starts to appear and, 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 uh, and you're, you know, it's sort of like, sort of what I say, you know, is, is, is the co-creation then starts to really, uh, manifest. We have have some questions for you, but first I want to say, this is a universal state and you have the sages of the ages describing this. You point out that yogis can do this, that you uh, also talk about the Tibetan rite of taking your consciousness at death and pushing it over to the uh, unified field. So there's a long historical traditions of describing just these states. So these are universal. There's, yeah, this, we're just built in technology for this. Do you want to describe the Tibetan? And your research, and then we have uh, some questions yeah. to go to. Yeah. And this is fascinating. It's a fascinating. You you discovered all this on your own, through your own modality. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, you know, it's sort of like I didn't. You were led. Uh, you led where, where you were imagine, pushed you know, to go. So imagine, right. So imagine I'm in the lab, right. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm doing research on the cerebrospinal fluid at Harvard, but simultaneously, I'm also <laughs> getting trainings in craniosacral therapy. And so there's this information that's coming in from the world, as well as my own personal, you know, my wife and I, we started doing, um, we started waking up at four in the morning and doing, you know, meditations and, 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 you know, we started doing, we didn't have kids at the time. And so it was really, we, you know, we were sort of open and, and I really had this belief that, um, my meditations would inform my research. My meditations would inform oh, yeah. my research. My meditations sure. would inform my research, right? And so yeah. it's sort of like, okay, let's just open up. Let's see what comes. Um, you're letting the very thing that you're studying speak to you in these subtle right, ways, right? Yeah. And so then you, you know, you 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 also talked about activation, and um, again, before I go to activation, you would still you would want to be comfortable with like your senses, right? Mm-hmm. You'd want to be comfortable with Train. like. Just, just be comfortable with like your five senses, right? Can you sit for 30 minutes and just be comfortable with what arises? Mm-hmm. You know, you, there might be a chest constriction. There might be an expansion. Can you be comfortable in just that, right? Because if you start activating your cerebrospinal fluid, it's sort of like uh, energy is going to start to flow, you know? And <laughs> it's so- It's going to clear those blocks, right? Right, it's going to clear- stir right, something right. up. Yeah. So, you know, so, 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 you know, drumming. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of ways, um, you know, mm-hmm. light, right sound yeah. um so drums right like we isn't that we, interesting the monotone beat whether it's a strobe light or a flickering yep. flame of a campfire or a drum or dancing yeah yep. so if yeah. you imagine right if you imagine this fluid that's not only in the middle of your spine that's bathing the outside of your spine that's in the middle of your brain um and that you can actually affect it from the external world with energy mm-hmm. with frequencies with drumming with humming humming oh yeah because you're vibrating yeah you're vibrating the column of the cerebrospinal fluid as well as vibrating the tissues in your neck as well as you said the vagal nerve right as well as vibrating the vagus nerve which is the main parasympathetic nerve going into your whole body right you're vibrating it and any time that we can um you know anytime we feel as if hey you know i'd like to activate something well vibration Mm-hmm. humming sound uh music you know beating of the drum jumping on your trampoline um yogic postures right all these different things exactly i see somebody dancing right like <laughs> what, like get get a rhythm right and now 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 think of your you know now imagine that as you're doing this there's actually a column of fluid that's doing that as well right mm-hmm. Boom, bah, bah. and that fluid um is not only creating a resonance, right? Is not only creating a vibration. Oh yeah, it's a it's vial also... of fluid that, yeah. And so now here we are resonating mm-hmm. and that fluid is now beating up against the walls of your brain. Bum, 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 mm-hmm. bum, 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 You've got a bum, drum a inside. Yeah. You've got a drum inside, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, your heartbeat, your heartbeat's an amazing one, okay? Your heartbeat actually does regulate because as your heart constricts and as mm-hmm. your heart relaxes, the fluid, so the heart rate definitely affects the fluid. Um, you know, uh, and then the biggest one that is just incredible, and this is that ties into all the breath work that you're seeing 
is your breath. Yeah. And, um, you know, what's amazing about your breath is just how powerful it is, um, how, how we have this conscious ability to control it. Mm -hmm. But we also, it, if we're unconscious, it takes over, right? Gotcha. So like one of the most beautiful, if you have kids, like the most beautiful, well, I mean, kids are just beautiful anyways, but there's this point when they're learning how, when they're like falling asleep. And if you've ever held a child while they're falling asleep, there's the point where they are breathing. Oh. And then there's this. And then the body breathes them. And yeah. then the body starts breathing them. And you feel it, right? Every, like if you, if, 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 if you have children and you've sat with them and you just have this, you know, they're breathing. And then all of a sudden they start, they start falling asleep on your shoulder and there's this pause. And then all of a sudden. Switch gears. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the breath, where if we're sleeping, it takes over. You don't have to worry about it, right? I mean, you don't have to worry about it when you're asleep. <laughs> when you wake up, but you can change it. I could tell all of you, take a deep breath right now. You could. Mm -hmm. I could say breathe five, you know, five breaths in the next two minutes or, you know, five seconds. We're sounding a different Here, beat. Stop, right? So it's something that we have conscious control about. So the more that we're actually learning about the breath, the more that we're seeing it has amazing physiological properties to decrease stress, to increase Again, you talked about vagal tone, increasing vagal tone, increasing the parasympathetic nervous system so that our fight and flight sympathetic nervous system can decrease and relax. But what's awesome is that now research is that is scientists are looking very closely at how the breath affects the movement of the cerebrospinal fluid. Ah, if you look at like, you know, even Wim Hof, for instance, he'll, he'll oh, say, God. you know, yeah. he'll say, take a deep breath and bring and bring your cerebrospinal fluid into your brain mm -hmm. and, and, and deep inspirations. So mm -hmm. deep inspirations, what they've seen is literally, they've seen a shooting of cerebrospinal fluid into the third ventricle. So imagine oh, wow. like, like you have, like you can go- Like a fountain. Okay. Yes, a fountain <laughs> going into the third ventricle. How do they right? measure Remember? that? What? How do they measure it? From, um, they, they, they can measure the um, the movement of the fluid in in a canal. What do What do they have to hook up to you to find that? Oh, an MRI. Yeah, no, no. Oh. <laughs> you want me? To, I can. Uh, there's a couple of images here that I could show of this that is just absolutely yeah. amazing in terms of what they've done. Okay, but what you're describing also is that we're just not uh, just not our legs and our eyes, but you've given us so many more controls you're describing that we can actually get a handle on to navigate our our way. Downshift, upshift, this reality, that reality. There's so absolutely. many controls that we have that we can oh, we can take conscious, control of, that we can conscious steer. Control. Con conscious control. Conscious yeah. controls, right? Not the unconscious, yeah. manifesting. What am I doing? What am I choosing right now? to do, to pay attention to, to ink, to bring, to increase my awareness, to be able to hold mm -hmm. all of experience, uh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Make it richer. Right? Exactly. And, 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 and also so, activate, you're bringing in more life force, right? If we truly yeah. are connected to that yeah. undifferentiated <laughs> field of energy and the, you know, we are, we are actively bringing in more energy. Do you think that's yes. true? Do you think that's possible? Do you think yes. that's what we're doing? Absolutely. And so I'm, you know, so my next meditation that's going to come out is going to be a, um, it's going to be the sacred pump. Mm -hmm. because we're actually going to use the breath to pump the cerebrospinal fluid from the sacrum, the sacred fluid, up the cord into the third ventricle. And then the, the last part that I want to mention before getting to any questions is, um, we are starting to open up, you know, we're starting to sort of explore um, natural uh, uh, psychedelics with DMT, uh, dimethyltryptamine. And yeah, dimethyltryptamine, by natural, you mean the body's generating it. The body is generating <coughs> yeah. endogenously, yeah. right? And so DMT is found in the animal kingdom. It's found in the plant kingdom. Um, people drink the tea. Or, 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 or go to the, you know, the, the toad and, 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 and have various uh, 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 DM, ways of, of ingesting DMT. We have now found that DMT is released by the pineal gland. It's secreted in the pineal gland. 
and it's found in the cerebrospinal fluid and it's found in other tissues of the so brain. We so we manufacture it. We manufacture it. Yeah. And, and so imagine, right? So imagine um, these sort of endogenous, endogenous because it, we, we self make them. Right. We don't need to exogenously. We don't need outside agents. They're exactly. fine. We need outside we agents, right? So yeah. now as you're doing these, um, these sort of cerebrospinal fluid activations, you are bringing the cerebrospinal fluid into the third ventricle. You're activating your third ventricle. You're activating your pineal gland. And we don't know this yet, but could you then, by activating the pineal gland, release small quantities of DMT into your cerebrospinal fluid so you get this sort of semi-psychedelic effect through your whole body? And so when your inner screen of your mind flips on and you start seeing visions, that might be how it works. That might exactly be how it works. Yeah. Wow. And it's also shifting gears so that your optic processing center is inputting something not from your optics, your eyes, but from some other part of you. Something else is being delivered to produce that, that vision. Right, sense. right. Okay. Look, uh, no. Fascia is supposed to be like I've read the fascia around our organs is this another network and grid and um, ne- yeah, and it's emitting light or energy. And I've also seen that with DNA research. Controversial. Controversial. Maybe there's something to so, it. Fa- yeah, fascia. Um, and, and what I want to be uh, something else that I kind of want to bring out there is When we look at fluid, okay, so so I'm saying this in terms of like, um, you know, I sort of say, okay, well, the CSF is in these cavities, right? We call these cavities ventricles. But in reality, um, what we what we're learning is that you know, there's it's not so separated like that. Right, and it's so, a whole system. It's a whole system, right? Yeah. So now, many so like, parts. You look up, yeah, if you look up like new, you know, new, new cerebrospinal fluid research, it's, it's now the fluid that is coming through the brain that's washing your brain while you're asleep. Yeah. And so these cavities, so this brain can actually open up to this fluid system and cause this fluid to come through the fascia, through mm-hmm. the oh. tissue oh, and wow. clean it all out, right? Mm-hmm. So when I say it's in these ventricles, when you start talking about connective tissue like fascia that is intricately interwoven, it's truly connected. It's yeah. really connected, and the fluid is when we looked at some of the molecules in the cerebrospinal fluid, we actually saw a lot of things like collagen and oh fibrinogen and things that would make up an extracellular matrix but it was in liquid form. So I call it the liquid matrix, right? The liquid crystalline sort of matrix that then the liquid becomes more condensed yeah, and becomes now the fluid in the fascia. And then the, that fluid becomes more condensed and becomes the fascia. So the way that I see it is even the fascia is still an intermingling of fluids in the fascia and then learning about you know how are well how are the more differentiated pieces of those collagen then working with the fluid and what's that sort of balance and dynamic in play and how is this working throughout not only the fluids of your body but the organs right the cells and then the organs and then our whole system and maybe we have technology now to actually see that where we couldn't before. Because if you take a dead body, you start cutting it open. I'm quite sure that cerebral uh, spinal fluid is not flowing uh, the, the way that it is when it's fully activated. So you wouldn't see it. You wouldn't see the meridians. You wouldn't see the energy flow. You, it's, it's like adorable. stasis, dead, gone. So you've got to see it in play. And I think that um, Gerald Pollack has something to... Uh, is worth you investigating. He talks about inside those tubes Mm -hmm. that water behaves differently and actually can hold a charge. So there's another conduit for this energy that we feel in this work and in life um, mechanically. 
that we hadn't Beautiful. seen before with the fourth phase of water. Now you're hitting every, you're just, yeah. you're, 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 you're hitting everything on this. Um, so, <laughs> I, so the I question, think we're on the right? breakthrough of some right. discoveries exactly. and we can start yeah. honoring our inner technology and start utilizing yeah. it well. And so start, I've actually worked, um, I worked with a group that was working with Dr. Pollock and uh, they were going to see if the cerebrospinal fluid could become, could go into this fourth phase. Oh, and that's unfortunately, exciting. we yeah. needed um, much more cerebrospinal fluid than is present. They need mm -hmm. something like 500 mils of cerebrospinal fluid, which is quite a lot. We only have that's about, about how much we have in our entire body, isn't it? It's about it's about how much you produce a day. You have about 150 a day. mils uh, wow. uh, uh, a day. Wow. at any moment. So. That was a lot of cerebrospinal fluid. So now we've thought about, you know, can we pull it from different people? Um, you know, but they needed quite a bit of cerebrospinal fluid to actually ask that question. But um, I would investigate, you know, from your, from all your knowledge and all your experience that you put forth, investigate that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In that, could... So, you know, so Dr. Pollock's essentially uh, uh, the hypothesis is that water can become this fourth phase right. and it happens specifically uh, when when it Living interacts tissue. A, a, a tissue, like a hydrophilic yeah. surface, that yeah. it starts to separate. In the water molecules, exactly. And it starts to separate and you get a positive charge and a negative charge. Right. And what happens when you get a positive and negative charge? Well, what you've done it is you've flow. naturally now created a battery. Yeah. Energy flows, so the electrons flow, flows, right. charge flows energy. like our neurons, right? Right. Creates a and passageway. So with, yeah. with his research, what he's looked at is one of the activators of this fourth phase yep. is infrared light. Right. Yep. So it's... you've seen the benefit. Now people are, you know, they're, they're using infrared lasers. They're using infrared saunas now, oh. you know, the health benefits of infrared saunas. Yeah. So now, right, combine your knowledge of the cerebrospinal fluid with, if you have access to an infrared spana, go into it for 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. See what you feel. Yeah. And now using your subtle, using your ability to, mm -hmm. to subtly tune in. Ask what's going on. Yeah. You notice any difference in now in the, in the ability of your cerebrospinal fluid to, does it actually form a... a, a, a a matrix does it form that la la lattice that dr pollock talks about yeah. in your ventricles do you now you could actually self-generate electricity <laughs> this is light amp up your your energy levels and you know that's what happens in in these spiritual states yeah. exactly i think so this is also a matrix life. for information to flow for resolution to flow for emotional states of bliss and harmony and universal love and compassion to flow. Mm. It's called health, right? That's yeah. It. yeah, and That's we need it. the body. We need to bring the body along to achieve these and sustain these. So it's an embodied spirituality. And you're really it's breaking an some new ground here. You're breaking some fantastic yeah. new ground. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm always inspired by someone who can dance in the field of academia and then reach deep into the unknown and ask questions and not be afraid to ask questions yeah. like yourself. And so you have groundbreaking work here. This is really uh, something I mean, need time it's to digest exciting. the significance of what we're talking about today. Yeah, we know the technology is there. How does it work? This has mm -hmm. to be a key piece of it. All right. these, yeah. We Let's go have, to the chat room. Let's well, go. I'm not, oh, well, open up several the mic. questions. Of, yeah, you can yeah. raise your hand using the hand raising aspect of Zoom. Tony, you had several questions that you were typing as we went along. Do you want to just ask your questions? Tony Hall is a adjunct professor at the University of New Mexico. He's an anth he's a uh, astrophysicist. astrophysicist, not an anthropologist. <laughs> a astrophysicist. Hey, Tony. Hello, and thank you very much. And uh, Mario, this is this is fantastic. I, I'm totally enjoying this. Uh, I feel like I'm drinking from a fire hydrant, but it, and it's quite wonderful. Um, I have some uh some specific questions um and you mentioned the pituitary gland i wonder if you could say more how this interacts uh with uh csf so um yeah let me actually uh get that up it's a great question thanks so much for asking um all right let me open this up aha uh -huh. okay so uh this is the brain this is somebody who's looking um that 
that way, for instance, mm -hmm. right? And here's the pineal gland. This right here that you see here, this is the third ventricle. So this is the this is the gray matter. This is what everyone, um, you know, this is how we, let's say, think, and this is what everyone brings a lot of importance to. If we take this big, this small box and make it bigger, um, this is now the third, in here is the third ventricle. Um, and this is a midline space. It's perfectly midline. It's sort of where you would imagine your brow center uh, to be. Um, sort of, uh, you know, if you take it from your ears, midline, perfectly midline in everyone. Um, the pituitary gland is in front. So you can see that um, if you were to carve this out, it actually, the, the cerebrospinal fluid goes all the way down and makes contact with the, with the pituitary gland in front, as well as making contact with the pineal gland in back. So some people are putting together, you know, it's like, well, what's the pineal gland? Like, what's the what's the energy of the pineal gland and the pituitary gland in terms of in this in this fluid and, and the dynamics of the fluid? Well, there's also the hypothalamus and the thalamus, the hypothal the thalamus, as as people may know, um, is very important for all sensory information that comes to the brain gets filtered by the thalamus, right? The hypothalamus, the hypothalamus essentially is the pituitary uh, hypothalamic uh, adrenal axis, important for um, so many uh, regulatory homeostatic principles of, okay. of, of metabolism and, and temperature and, and appetite and stress in our bodies. Um, and, and so there's a very intricate connection here between the pituitary, the pineal gland and the third ventricle. Um, that if you do have an ability to investigate your third ventricle, what I tell people is go to your third ventricle. If you know the anatomy, go to your third ventricle, spend some time there. Even if you're like just sitting as if you're sitting on a boat, having a drink or something like that, having some snacks and floating and seeing what happens. Then paddling your boat and going back to the pineal gland, saying hi to your pineal gland, and then coming up your pituitary gland. And the walls, if you were to look out off the horizon, would be your hypothalamus and your thalamus. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, there's some great work um, out of um, uh, Russ Ryder, who you may know. He's done so much work on melatonin out of UT Health Sciences in San Antonio. And, and you know, they've looked at uh releasing of compounds from the pineal gland and you can see it's going directly and informing so from the pineal gland through the third ventricle it goes and it starts to inform the pituitary gland and then it may actually the pituitary gland they haven't studied um, 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 end results from the pituitary gland, but what their hypothesis is, is through the pineal gland, releasing the melatonin via the cerebrospinal fluid that then goes and interacts with the pituitary gland, um, as well as you can see here very closely with, with the, the hypothalamus uh, on both sides. So very, very intricately connected. Boy. And uh, does, does then the state of the pituitary gland controls some of these other functions well the pituitary gland is so important as a master regulator for the you know it's sort of the 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 the, the, the top of the pituitary hypothalamic axis so um uh yes stress yeah. yes. metabolism homeostasis right um any one of those would be uh you know would be and and so if you have, you know, as an astrophysicist, you might, you know, you might already be, uh, you might already have this ability to go into your, you know, from the perspective of the fluid, go into your third ventricle, bring your attention to that third ventricle and literally go visit your pituitary gland and uh -oh. see how it's doing. Just ask it, right? You're not, you're not, a, you're not making any, you, you, you're not judging it in any way. You're just going to pay it a visit as if you were an old, you, you know, you were a grandfather seeing your <laughs> grandchild for the first time. What are you going to do? How are you going to open up to hello, pituitary? Hug God, and embrace and welcome it and exactly, be very thankful right? for it. You're not going to say, oh my goodness, look at you. You're so, get flowers. You know, yeah. you're so inflamed or enclosed. No, how I see you. How are you today? Right. And just see with that 
care as if you were holding a child, as if you were going through the fluid and holding your pituitary gland, holding it and just saying, I see you. I see you. And then notice if you can, if it doesn't do anything, fine, come back the next day, right? If you go to your grandchild and your grandchild is sleeping, you're not going to stop visiting it. <laughs> okay. Right? You're going to go back the next day and you're going to see, oh, here's my grandchild again. How is it doing today? What is it? What is it doing? Or, you know, whatever it might be. Oh, hey. You know, there, I was I asking about who is the conductor of this symphony because you've got this over here talking to this over here, uh, merging with this over here, activating this. And I realized we're the conductor. It's really what we do with our time, our lifestyle, our practices, what we're doing, where our attention flows, the things that we have around us. Are we walking? Are we bouncing on a trampoline? Are we tapping our foot? Are we dancing? Are we imagining? Are we intuiting? Are we transcending? We're the conductors, aren't we, on this? We're co-creating, we're co-dancing with this really beautiful system that has its own wisdom, its own ways. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just- Yes, and watch where your you said it, right? Watch where your attention goes. Yeah. Yeah. And what you're bringing the, to it. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that's been really one of the many things that's been remarkable about your talk is your knowledge of anatomy yeah. and very specific knowledge, unlike what I've seen in anatomy books, and I've not seen many. But I wonder if one was to try and catch up a little bit. Is there a book that will help us? Uh, an anatomy book that would help us on, as well as your books, of course. Uh, my my book on the cerebrospinal fluid is going to be coming out next year, um, but um, really, even just ba- you know, it depends on sort of the level of detail that you're curious about, that you're interested in. Um, even just you know, even just looking up, for instance, like brain ventricles and stuff like that, and just getting a sense, you know, of uh, I have a couple images. Let me just show you, you know, even just showing you a couple images here may um, may trigger uh, some stuff um, for you. Uh, let me share my screen again. Okay, so here, for instance, you know, and 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 these are from like Adam. Adam is a good resource. But you know, you, you, where where these are the ventricles this is a, 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 a sort of a human hmm. looking this way. Right? You can see the nose and the mouth. This is the lateral ventricles, the cent, the third ventricle, the fourth ventricle, um, and then if you were to take this, that's the third ventricle. Um, if you were to look at the ventricles as a model, and they have this too. So this is like a filled in model of the spaces that are inside our brain. And they even have some of these that rotate in space Mm -hmm. that you might be interested in looking at. Um, But you could see, you know, the the third, the lateral ventricle here going all the way back here. Um, Some people say it looks like a flying bird. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, and then back here. uh, And then let me, let me show you one other. Where, oh, here's the. So this is, um, you know, so this is, so, so you can use this as a basic one, you know, here are the ventral, here are the la- here are the, uh, the hemispheres, here is the one that's looking at you. So this is as if you are looking at somebody. So do you see the ventricles that go out mm-hmm. into both hemispheres and then the midline third ventricle, which is high. And then this like rhomboid, this is the fourth ventricle. It's like this rhomboid sort of shape. And then from there, It goes all the way down the central canal, right? So this is as if it's looking towards you. This one is as if it's looking to the, to the, to the, to the left, to the side. So you can kind of see where, how far back it goes. And you mentioned, you know, like, you know, I always bring this up, but you know, why does it have these little projections back? And, and this is our, this is our optic, you know, this is where we process vision. Okay. And so, you know, why couldn't it just curve here? No, no, no. It needs to send this little projection back to get like that part of the brain. Or why isn't this just a blob? You know, it's just a, just a blob of fluid. You know, what's the anatomy that's actually trying to, trying to, trying to guide us. So, and, and here in, in back to your question, right, right here where my cursor is would be your pituitary gland right Mm -hmm. here. And back here would be where the pineal gland is. 
It's and so then, interesting. Um, it feeds right to the visionary center. Exactly. And it goes back. It actually has these quite, projections. Right? Quite boldly. Yeah. So um, I believe in the anatomy because the anatomy helps inform. It helped. I had a basis in anatomy, right? So I was so physical. It was like if I couldn't see it or touch it, it didn't exist. Right. And so and then with experience and being like, well, I'm feeling something but I don't see it, right? So then I'm like, oh man, now, okay. So then it's sort of like, well, my sphere then, my sphere of what I think I know or what I can put my attention on now changes. Wait, I can feel something, but I don't see it? Well, how often do we feel something, but we don't see it? It happens all the time. Oh yeah, but trust it, right? Trust it. Right, trust see, it. Don't... See without seeing. Could exactly. you go back to that last slide where it looked like lights and little microtubules and, and all of that? And by the way, um, what we were just looking at our really early interview with uh, Stuart Hameroff on right. microtubules. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's something to that? Do you think that is kind of where matter meets consciousness? Do you think he's on to something? This has kind of reminded me of it. Yeah. Although this is cilia in the cerebral ventricles. Yeah, so this can is transmit world. light, vibrations, movement, and molecules. Yeah, interesting. Transmit information. Yeah. So this is what this is actually uh, Calvin Carter. He is a well now he's a he's not a neuroscience student anymore. He's a postdoc, but um, he took this image. This is in a scanning electron microscope image oh wow. of the inside. So this is the wall. Mm -hmm. that makes contact with the fluid this is the wall of the I'm of your so brain famous. that makes contact with the fluid and you can see all these sort mm -hmm. of antenna like structures and these are cilia mm -hmm. and if you imagine these They're cilia antenna. yes yeah. these are antenna these are antenna they have receptors on them yeah. and these receptors can perceive so when they look at you know what these cilia have they have photoreceptors which perceive light they okay. have chemoreceptors, which perceive growth factors, hormones, but they also have what's called mechanoreceptors too. Mechanoreceptors sense flow, movement, shear stress, vibrations. Mm -hmm. So there are actually receptors on these antenna that can perceive light, vibrations, molecules, movement, all these things that are on the wall of the brain that um, that makes contact with the cerebrospinal fluid. So leading to leading to some sort of hypothesis that well then the brain must must transmit this information the the fluid must then transmit this information to the brain, right? Yeah. If you have the receptors, why on else that, would it pick it up if it wasn't? Why else would it be, right? It. Exactly. Why else would the receptors be to pick it up? Nature's very efficient. Well, no. yeah, yeah. One one thing you you've mentioned the word resonance several times. And I wonder if there are any characteristic frequencies of uh, CSF in the various cavities, and if, if we might ah. respond to musical stimulus, whether it's drumming or a certain pitch or whatever, in a resonant manner that really would lock question. us in. That would lock us in. Yeah. Can you can you can you can you help me design the experiment to put a probe? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that that is. Um, you know, some people have mentioned maybe the Schumann resonance. Right. Um, yeah. We don't yet know. So that would be, so that we, that's sort of like a million dollar question. And, and without, without, you know, for me, um, I don't yet know how to get to that without putting a probe in to somebody who's alive mm -hmm. and, you know, willing to do that and measure, can we measure the frequency of this fluid? And then, right alter their environment and see and then look at um look at the frequency of this fluid in let's say disease states or in altered states and then doing something to alter it right what we do know is that what people are starting to look at is more macro movements so as i mentioned right the fluid can bathe the brain during sleep and so what they're looking at is in 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 like alzheimer's um, or in mild cognitive impairment, do, is there less flow of the fluid through the brain in people who have neurodegenerative diseases? We're not getting yet at the resonance of the fluid itself, but we are looking at flow. So if you can find a way 
and and you know i am talking to some people who do like biofield viewing who who are who you know because that's sort of the million dollar question can we get a resonance of this fluid and can we see right is there is there a certain red i would love to do that and then go to like a drumming circle or go to you know have you have you jump on a trampoline and then measure the resonance what we're trying to do is we're trying to get like maybe downfield um 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 markers of that but it's still not the actual question that you know so well, we have an ethnomusicologist uh here in our community lawson right, right. and you might want right. to uh, attend his right. talk in january on a sunday he's going to go into timber and looking at a lot of these factors mm -hmm. but not still getting at the heart of the question it's hard to get to go ahead Tony. anyway just a thought could we bound the problem at all by looking at the elasticity of the the material around the cavity and the volume or shape of the cavity uh, these sort of things can be put into mechanical uh, finite element analysis and you can find out things like what are the frequency or frequencies now this would not be as act because the elasticity may vary by from minute to minute but maybe there's a, a certain domain i think it might be interesting yeah oh, absolutely I'm with you, man. Can I, can I make a suggestion then? So we have a practice where we're drumming or rattling monotone beat at 210 beats per minute. Right. We have extraordinary experiences right. in the safe container of a ritual. This is we focus the body, the fascia tissue, by assuming a simple standing or sitting posture, right. uh, such as bending the antenna, right. shaping the crystalline matrix, and we have extraordinary experiences, which would be like read out on the dial that right. something's happening. Yeah. We've had a few lab tests, something unusual is happening. Right. So I think that these kinds of ancient practices, when you get these kinds of results, it means that our ancient ancestors happen onto some system that works. So there's the beginning of an answer. Mm -hmm. We've been collecting uh, experiences for, for now, 50 years. Um, almost 50 years. Yeah, just the under Institute 50. Has. Yeah. Yeah. The Institute has. Yeah. Institute So, I mean, yeah. there's, so, there's a sideways way of doing it, but it right. really, I mean, if we're this technology, right. then our experiences are the readout mm -hmm. of what's yeah. happening. You can start to say, what are the pieces is, and the parts? But I want to make another option. This, uh, uh, this is part of the ongoing discussion that we've been having and research yeah. we've been developing. Christine Van Poole, the anthropologist from the University of Missouri, has been helping and assisting yeah. Oh, yeah. putting together a program where we can document this more for, more thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but, but I was wondering, actually, if, if Mario, in the sense of knowing what the ecstatic trance is, oh, is yeah. there any way this could be correlated? Is there any specific research question you would ask of this? Laura has laid out something that I think is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. To be continued? Mm. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. You, okay. <laughs> okay yes. Thank you, Tony, yeah. for bringing that up. To be yeah, continued. Well, I, I, I think yeah. this could be, could be a great uh, discussion. Thank you for your, your contribution yeah. to that. If you go back to that slide, I just want to make one other question for you, Mauro. Um, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Oh, thank you. That slide of the Celia. So some 20 years ago, and this exhibit went around the world it was called the bodies oh, yeah. and I remember that. we attended that we wrote articles we interviewed people around that but they had taken chinese prisoners very controversial and when they died they actually grabbed their bodies and they dissolved all the tissue around it so selectively they would show the lungs which looked like cauliflower right or just tree mm. leaves mm. they would they would bring out different aspects of the body and isolate them through dissolving the tissue around right. it you could actually see parts of the body i'm sure there's a book on it mm -hmm. sure. extraordinary but when you show the cilia what it looks like to me is the the various sea life that grows up the various sponges and um and and sea life that grows that reminded me of sea life that i saw and mm -hmm. that so nature has the same patterns over and over and over and over again because the design works right oh, yeah. so she has the same patterns whether on the land and sea mammals um amoebas and sponges and jellyfish or uh whatever it is the same designs over and over do you not see that this is also replete throughout all living systems perhaps from the micro to the macro yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. That nature Absolutely. has certain patterns because if you were going to look at it like a technology, 
this is what works. This is what moves energy. This is what creates the electro charge yeah. mm-hmm. inside mm-hmm. the force state of water. This is mm-hmm. what is moving this along. This, I mean, it's just so beautiful. Yeah, I mean, why make you know why make so many why make so many different systems if it works so well? Yeah, yeah, and and, and you yeah. you know I think you you hit it. You, you know they actually so based on that question they actually studied evolutionarily the cells that make contact with the cerebrospinal fluid, and they found that those cells evolutionarily uh, that the cells that make contact with the cerebrospinal fluid in us are the same evolutionarily are. Um, evolve from the cells in like a starfish that perceive the ocean that need to take information from the ocean to determine, am I going into a toxic environment here or do I go this way? Right? So, Mm -hmm. so the, 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 the nervous system of a starfish that's perceiving the ocean. And that's then my connection back to the ocean, back to the seawater is although it's not one molecule away from, although the cerebrospinal fluid isn't one molecule away from seawater, evolutionarily the cells exactly yeah. the cells that perceive the fluid environment are evolutionarily related and 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 scientists have showed that you know using um very detailed uh, uh, uh sequencing you know dna sequencing uh uh um technology so yeah. absolutely you know it looks like it and it actually evolved from it so mm. beautiful connection yeah. and we're not so special all of life is special. <laughs> all of life is sacred, right? It's all a flow of energy, and let's embrace it all. Uh, yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. embrace the 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 right the the miracle of this yeah. of the differentiated state that allows you to taste your favorite food, right? That allows you Back to, to your have pizza. <laughs> with somebody else. That allows yeah. you to hold a child's hand Mm -hmm. that allows you to smell the flower, to see the butterfly landing on the flower, you know, that allows you to actually experience that. Um, And that's special, right? And it's very special. And so, so that's, that to me is the gift. And that's really what science started out to celebrate was God's handiwork, right? To look at all the parts and to look at the physicality of it and to say this beautiful divine creation so I'm glad you're bringing the spirit back to your, to your work there, Mara. Yeah. Um, we have 10 minutes left. Well, I think I would like to, to ask, you know, what do you want to leave us with? I mean, this, is, this presentation has been absolutely fantastic and uh, mind-blowing. And um, where do we go from here? You leave, before we sign off today, leave us with some bits of wisdom of where to follow up Somebody on Somebody walks up to you and says, here, I'm going to fund whatever project that you want to go explore. What do you do with it? Yeah, well, that's a good question. <laughs> um but sorry was, you told me not to read the chat but it's hard not to read the chat okay, oh what yeah do, what do you think in the chat that you want to respond to you can, uh, you somebody, can respond. Dorian, dorian commented on michael levine um i presented at a at a conference actually with him he went right before me um and i know him very well uh we have we have we have talked uh numerous times um and uh and you know he's looking at um, he's definitely looking at this this non neural bioelectricity, um, but more in like organs and limb regeneration um, oh, based okay. on the last thing that I that, that sort of we 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 left each other with. Um, I haven't looked at his research more um, more, but that's a that's a really good connection. Whoever made that connection, uh, Dorian, uh, speak up. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you know that 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 bioelectric communication um, is really really important. That's why you know look, even looking at Dr. Pollock's work uh, or Dr. Levine's work, um, and that's kind of you know those are the things those 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 multi the people who are doing research in all these different realms, even you know astrophysics or molecular biology. It, it, it they're all coming it's all coming together, right? There's all yes. something that's coming together, and so knowing how to read the literature and knowing how to sort of you know perceive that and 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 going from how does this apply here or is there a greater application of 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 things is 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 really important dr levine's work is definitely uh, up there in terms of um in terms of importance can on you that. connect us we can invite him to a sunday <laughs> 
Oh okay. yeah, I mean yeah, he's he's very approachable. So I'm not even sure I would need to connect you. He's quite an amazing human. And, and the other question was on Joaquin Kepler. You mentioned earlier. Uh, does he have anything published that we can look up or follow up on? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah uh, okay. Ton of stuff. Just look him up. Okay. He's yeah. got all his papers. I think are 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 um, all his papers are uh, are are out there um, and uh, and and available. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm actively working. It'll be in my book as well, but I'm actively working, um, with, with, uh, you know, I, I spoke with him because my, as a clinician scientist, what I like to do is, um, is, uh, taking these very esoteric papers. Like if you read his paper, you're like, wow, how does this have anything to do with me? Right, even though he's talking about consciousness, and he'll he'll admit to this, right? He's like, I, you know, I just I work on consciousness, and I and 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 so I contacted him and said, look, um, I read all your work, and I think that um, that the ZPF could be informing the cerebrospinal fluid first. What do you think? And he got back to me, you know, as I said, he's like, wow, that's not, you know, let me think about this. this is a, this is a you know that sounds like a really po possible hypothesis from from his conceptual theory of consciousness right so um or fluids let's say fluids from cerebrospinal fluid to fluids but the cerebrospinal fluid being let's say the less condensed differentiated fluid in the human body um and so then i contacted him and said look i want to do some work around this because if if if, if that's true then could we set and he's like you know i don't i don't transform my work to humans and i go well that's my job right i I'm a clinician scientist, and so that's what I that's what I do. I take this very esoteric readings, and I say, look, based on these theories that you've put forth, could it be that we create a program that does X, Y, and Z? And he says, absolutely, right. This Bingo. is like you're right on. Great, you know, I'll 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 send you some info as I get it, but I'm going to create the program. So. If I were to do, you know, if somebody, let's say, gave me like, okay, here's $20 million, um, it would be to really, uh, to, to, to fund an institute mm -hmm. where we are doing research with people to ask these just basic fundamental questions, right? Is creating programs, and this is, comes from my clinician perspective of improving human experience to yeah. decrease suffering right so anything that we might do and this might be a center that looks you know it's like a campus and there might be everything from you know a farming gardening yeah. drumming light mm -hmm. you know um psychedelic medicine um you know uh, uh some sort of like love therapy where all you're doing is maybe you know focusing on love or something, oh, you know, dance. meditation, like all these sorts of different things. And, and, and we're doing research on it at a very human level, right? Even if we're describing experiences in five people, but where we have the statisticians, where we have the, 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 the therapists or the counselors or the healers, where we have the people who can take, even if it's just an experience of five people and it's subjective, right. where we can start infiltrating the system with this literature that can really start to shift, you know, sort of- The worldview, the paradigm. Exactly. The new and story so, that we want to tell ourselves. Right, yeah. right, right. And that would be, you know, it's sort of like, um, like, okay, what's the study that we're going to do on, uh, drumming. What's the study that we're going to do? Like Dr. Hull said, you know, hey, do we, let's put two million dollars towards looking at resonant frequency or um, you know uh, frequencies of the tissues uh, next to it. And, and, and okay, it's a readout, but still, we're trying to go in that direction, right? The biggest thing on any of this is 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 funding, you know, mm -hmm. and then endogenous. Right. Everyone's still looking at exogenous. Right. It's like uh, it's like now, like, um, you know, uh, uh, what's out there. Right? But what about what's right in here? Exactly. How can we enhance this endogenously? And what are the read? What are the readouts that are not only present now, but how can we design an R&D 
Mm -hmm. that creates new technology to read what we want to read, right? For somebody 50 years ago, 60 years ago to say, hey, look, we're going to have an MRI that's going to be able to see tissues. You know, you might have said, hey, that's crazy. So for somebody to be able to read, let's say, subtle energies, biofield viewing, um, you know, uh, energy, undifferentiated energy prior to differentiating into the physical body, um, resonance of fluids, right, whatever that might be, um, that would be then the Institute and it's guided by love. Mm -hmm. So you have the guide where every question is, does this go towards love or away from love? Towards love or away from love? And every question would be guided by love. It would just that would be the that would be the nurturing underpinning of it. <laughs> okay, and then I would like to add quantum entanglement on a human level, because we see that with our work over and over and over again. People scattered across the world in lifetime doing this spiritual practice, sharing our experiences that are visionary experiences with drumming and these postures, and then the same element showing up again and again and again per episode, per session. How is that possible? We didn't communicate. Nobody was led. Nobody had any precognition. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, we have to be made up of the quantum level. We are Mm -hmm. made up of the atoms. We've got the atoms and the particles and that level that exists in us as well as this level of reality. And we're living in a cosmic level of reality. They have to connect. We're so used to seeing everything separate, but those have to connect. And then we're seeing this effect. So I have this, um, (laughs) absolutely. And I'm, I'm creating a little, you know, if anyone out there, so one of my other goals too, is I like to do kids books. um, Yes. Yes. uh, Because, you know, what I think, so I have two kids, well, I have three kids now, two, well, (laughs) one's eight and one's five, one's in third grade, one's in kindergarten, and one was just born. And the amount of time that we take to talk about um, the alphabet mm-hmm. and numbers is just, it's just crazy. Where if we took half of that time and started talking about the breath, awareness, oh, you know, yeah. hey, what's awareness? Our dreams. If you, ask, if you ask a four-year-old, you know, or a three-year-old or a two-year-old what the letter A is, they're not going to know. But yet, what do we do? We pound it into them, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing. Hey, what's awareness? Oh, you don't know what we just stop. No, we don't do that with letters and numbers. So why do we do that with concepts that we feel are what too complex for them, even though or empowering they are are living in awareness, right? Mm -hmm. So it's to take these sort of concepts and to distill them in such a way so that kids can understand them and can have fun with them. Okay. Now, here's the concept of this sort of connection at the elemental level that I'm working on as a kid's book. And some people told me, well, it's a little out there, but you know, I'll throw it out there anyway. Like out there. If if somebody wants to work, you know, in terms of like creating the images, because it could just be um, a book of images, right? And so here's, you know, here's, so here's the thing. And, and, and this is, you know, this is reality. This is truth. Uh, You have a grandfather who passes away they want to be cremated you cremate the body and they want their ashes to be blown or dispersed in the ocean you go and you disperse the ashes in the ocean you then see fish eating the ashes (laughs) one week later now those ashes are pure carbon that's a carbon molecule right there yeah. Two weeks later, you go fishing and you catch a fish that ate your grandfather's ashes. And turned and it into flesh. And turned it into flesh. You then put that fish on your plate. That carbon that that fish ate was in your grandfather's body. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. I can guarantee, has happened. <laughs> Go we'll start with the stars, like we're going to find out. Exactly, next. right? But start with the yeah. stars or a water molecule, a hydrogen, an oxygen molecule. I bet you that we have shared an oxygen molecule. Yeah. yeah. 
through our breath, mm. in and out, going into our blood, being condensed, being used, and then coming out as carbon dioxide, going up to the trees, going back to the oceans and finding wherever you are. You know, can we trace that? Can we actually trace that? You know, can we can we put a little tracer on a carbon molecule and see, hey, for the next 15 years, let's just trace this molecule, right? Is there a way to actually do that and see, look at all of these things that this carbon, and now you're like, yeah. wow, right? <laughs> I, I, we record our trance sessions and the sharing. I can show you journeys recorded where somebody was that molecule and took the roller coaster ride and, mm. and reported yeah. that with no intellectual, just reporting a yeah. spirit journey. The universe wants us to know it in this intimate it does. level. It does. And to celebrate it. Exactly. And to love it. What a exactly. And be loved. What a powerful exactly. message. Yeah, this yeah. is. Wow. I applaud all your work, Mara. Uh, Thank you. I'll just mention quickly, uh, Christine Van Poole, of course, said I, I uh, volunteered to be on the uh, fundraising committee. Oh, uh, well, did, can we hear from and, you, Christine? And she also Open said Native mind. Americans traditionally taught children to breathe. Oh, I did not know that. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, we need yeah. to bring that back. Yeah, you yeah. know, breath I'd like work. To hear from you, Christine. So Christine Van Poole is an anthropologist uh, professor at the University of Missouri, and she's... With her husband, Todd. Todd, both. A team, yes. husband-wife team. Yes, good to see you, yeah. Chris. Hi, wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. I have so many thoughts and questions. I think I wish that we had time to meet, and congratulations on the birth of your new child is exciting. Fantastic. Yeah, that's wonderful. And with uh, I did a dissolving chronic pain I'm trying to remember the authors a long time ago, but our work with Puya Mungay is really quite amazing, um, the trance states that produce. And I know personally, and I'm sure many could speak of it, that I've been pulled out of my body to the top of my head out. And I have a lot of spinal problems, a ton of, of spinal issues. Um, but it's amazing because after trance state, it's amazing. I can feel, um, probably now I know a spinal fluid, right? working on repairing injury, but I had a trance state where I, I felt a clog deep in my chest. And then later I go into the ER and I found I had two calcified discs in my thoracic spine. Mm. I was like, interesting that during trance state, my body knew it had a blockage there. So it's, it's pretty wow. fascinating how everything you're saying fits what we know yeah. in this, this practice. And we've been exploring similar things, I think with Kwea Munge, Paul and Laura have done a great job finding people um to, to talk to so I, I just really loved it and um i would love to talk to you sometime about yeah, michael yeah. winkleman he's an anthropologist and he suggests something a little different but i think i like your model a lot better than his but that's another story yeah so send me a send me a connection yeah okay sounds wonderful thank you yeah. again yeah thank yeah. you christine Fantastic. Um, thank you appreciate um, that Mauro. we need to have you come back when your book's published oh and, yeah and continue this discussion well, we'll uh, we'll take it to the next level. Or maybe and, a symposium, uh, well, like we get um, Joaquin and get Michael Levin and you back and Jerry Pollock and just have yeah. a talk fest here and could. start to. We could. Yeah, yeah that'd be fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. The other thing, too, that I do is, um, you know, uh, uh, I'm starting to kind of put together programs for like um, like meditation, like go from like step one to step two to step three to step four, and then bring in the cerebrospinal fluid. Yes. Um, yeah. And so if you're already, you know, just like um, yeah. just like uh, Christine said, yeah. you know, that now maybe she's noticing it, like the, the senses might have been actually cerebrospinal fluid. So yeah. I'm curious if now you you are aware of this fluid if in trance states you actually feel it more or or you can actually guide it because once you're aware of it you can start oh. guiding it and having a relationship with it wow. and um and so i'd be very curious from you know from your group also is, yeah. is 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 there a greater awareness that comes hey you know that sensation that i felt mm -hmm. that really could have been the cerebral spinal fluid and i never really kind of and and i get that a lot i didn't right? know about you know, it it's so. like wow yeah. that is the cerebral spinal Oh my goodness, this is that, you know, so it's kind of goes to like, could it be to, oh my God, yes, it is to, wow, this is really cool. Um, now let me start working with it and getting some really profound healing by working with it in the trance state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number one, the other one is actually guiding people. Then I have four or five different CSF meditations 
where, you know, we're actually activating the cerebrospinal fluid. So, you know, you'd be oh. sitting or lying down and we do things like perennial floor activations and holdings um, and breathings and, and, and things like that. Another as well tool as in our toolbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And what properties might this have if it can receive and transmit to our intent, to our mm -hmm. own intellect? Well, we're looking what is that connection there that Enjoy. it operates on a mind of its own, but also we can engage it? What is this what is, is that magnetic connection, whatever you want to call it? Exactly. Well, the, the, the traditional ancestors had that kind of yeah. connection. Oh, yeah. Whether they're going to the Vedic tradition, or the shamanic tradition, yeah. or what, there's something that the human experience already revealed. The ancestors that knew did, this. didn't have the, the scientific yeah. verification, but they had the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. well, more to uh, be discussed. Yeah, yeah so. for sure. Thank well, you for the time today. You're welcome. What with such you? little sleep with a little newborn. Yes, so. and uh, we'd love to meet your wife sometime as well. Uh, <laughs> after hearing the story of how you ended oh, up yeah. here in the first place, <laughs> yeah. she deserves a little FaceTime. And uh, let's stay in touch for sure. What a wonderful time.